50 million's not enough. Cut to 35. That's what a note from owner John Fisher read that was waiting for me at my desk. I scoffed at it, discarded it into the trash. But then I heard my phone blowing up. Notification, notification, buzz, buzz, ding, ding, and then a ring. It was head coach Mark Kotze. He didn't sound happy. Hung up on him and rushed to open up Twitter. The first thing I see, a tweet from Jeff Passan, declaring that A superstar pitcher Sean Manea had been traded along with prospect Aaron Holiday to the Padres. I panicked. I didn't approve this, I thought. I stormed into Jeff's office where he met me at the door with a smile on his face. Before I could even get into it, he said, I told you 50 million wasn't enough. You're going to need to get it down to 35 and fire those scouts. We don't need them. Let this be your last warning or I promise you that if you don't get this club down to 35 million, you'll be the next one to be fired. I was in shock. I'd never come across such an unrealistic, egregious expectation. And now I've lost complete control of one of the biggest trade pieces I had. And in return, two D potential prospects. Guess the only upside is now hitting that 30 million mark is going to be a bit easier with Manea's $9 million off the books. Elvis, Jed, Steven, I'm sorry, but by the end of today, you'll be at a new club. Maybe one that I'll treat and value a little bit better than we have. We're just a few days away from the trade deadline and this team is famished. The fans are frustrated. The press is already calling for my head. They think this trade is on me. If only they knew. This offseason is really going to be critical. I've got to put together a plan before this gets out of control. I need numbers on my side. Now if only I didn't throw away that note, then we might be in a better place. I know we got some work to do and I'm going to make good on this promise, but I'm going to need a lot more than sabermetrics. I need a little something of my own. I need a few days. Maybe I'll share with you what's on my mind. But until then, let's get the second half started. This is episode number two, Promissory. Well, you heard it. We've got to get this club down to $35 million. We're 34 and 64 right now. 28 games back. And if I actually go look where we are post Manea, but our player salary is at $61 million. We got to cut staff salaries. We, we got to follow Fisher's requests. We got to cut $30 million right now. This is going to be tough. 16 million is what we've got right now. He said to fire him. Who, what are the cheapest scouts we got? So we got Jeff Cho in the East. We got East and then we've got Dexter Juarez in the Central. Ralph Wilson in the West. The cheapest international is Akinori Hayes. So here's what we're looking at. Akinori Hayes is now our best scout. We went, we just cut 7 million in staff salary. We've now got 9.17 million. But now on to the, the main course, the trades. We've got to make some trades here. So first on the on the block. Let's hold on Chad, Chad Pinder for a second here. But Elvis Andrus, 15 million in his contract year. We've got to find someone here. Hopefully cheap prospects. See if there's anyone worthwhile. Anyone young. We're trying like Taj Bradley. Oh, wow. This is a... Uh... This is a really good trade, actually. I, I mean, okay. Taj Bradley is probably what we're going to get, but let's look at a couple others. Dude, Miguel Geraldo, too? All right. It's going to be official. Max Mayer and Victor Victor Mesa for Elvis Andrus. $130,000 salary here. Victor Victor Mesa, international. Uh, free agent signing. Max Mayer, top prospect. Let's see how this goes. Next up, Steven Piscotti. I don't know if we're going to get anything for him, but worth a shot. <laughs> oh, okay. All right, we're going to go Michael Burrows here. here. 22 B potential for Steven Piscotti. A huge flip in budget. Next up, Ramon Laureano. In the contract year, 2.8 million. Hopefully, I think we're going to get some pretty good prospects for him here. Hey, Todd Bra Taj Bradley back on here with Jonathan Aranda. Tyler Freeman and Will Benson. This is a really good trade here. Shortstop and a right fielder. Okay. Joe Perez and Forrest Whitley. Also two guys. These are from the Astros. This, is, uh, this might be pretty good right here. This is the trade, guys. This is the trade. JJ Blade and Jesus Lazardo are both guys that will step in and be starters next year. Where we're at budget wise now. And that is officially done it. 
2022, as you can see, we're at $31 million right now. We have no bookings for the future. We have no one on contracts for the future. But the question is, is there more moves that we could make? Steven Vogt, for example. He's a free agent next year, and at the age of 37, he's not getting a lot of playing time. Bad Pinder, last year as well. Probably good for us to deal him. We'll see if there are any takers. And there's a couple. This is good. Hunter Brown, relief pitcher, 23 years old. B potential, 60 overall, in exchange for Steven Vogt. Deal done. Next up, Chad Pinder. Wow, this this is it right here. George Kirby, like one of the Mariners' top prospects. Definitely a deal that we want to do right now. $28 million. We gave ourselves $7 million in room now with a tremendous amount of changes. And we've got a lot, we've got a lot of setup to do in the old organization now. If I look at the roster, completely out of whack. We need to bring six people up to the MLB. And we've got six places also on the 40-man now. We are hurting in the outfield. And so we've made two pickups are about to sign right now. Eddie Hernandez to a minor league contract. And center fielder Glenn Fletcher also to a minor league contract. After a lot of work, the athletics lineup looks as follows. Christian Pache leading off. We brought up Logan Davidson, who's renewable here. This is going to be kind of a rookie season for him. Super late, 24 years old, 70 overall. Time for him to get brought up. Sheldon Noisy, that's right. I heard all you guys in the comments. I said his name wrong. I apologize. Noisy. Sheldon Noisy. Third baseman. I mean, he's had a, an incredible year. 800 OPS, best player on the squad right now. And uh, a positive war here. So, got our backup catcher now with vote out. Austin Allen, 28 years old. He's he, you know he's on the climb, 70 overall. Then we've got Bailey McKinney that's still playing first. He's not doing very well, but we are investing a million dollars into him, and he's in arbitration next year. And uh, I kind of don't know what to do with him yet, but he is freshly signed. And it's unfortunate that that was a decision that was made uh, that I inherited. Kevin Smith going to be playing second. Uh, Luis Barrera, we called him up. Um, he's got just a little bit of MLB service time so far. Not very good, but you know, contract-wise, he's getting seven hundred thousand dollars and he's renewable next year. We kind of need to to get him, thrust him in into the lineup, um, potentially get him out or get him to perform. Same with Sky Bolt, fifty-eight overall in. Uh, and right, he's almost at a year uh, or a, th a tenth of a year of MLB service time. He's also getting $700,000 uh, at 28 years old. So we need to get him in there as well. We also brought up some uh, other players here that are kind of in the middle of their career. Uh, Mail Machin, 28 years old, can play a ton of positions, as you can see there. Uh, very good utility guy. Jonah Bri, Bri that we brought up can play first base, catcher, second and third. So pretty good there. Uh, Cody Thomas, who brought him up, uh, he can play basically any position in the outfield. And then Jordan Diaz, who's got uh, who can play third and second. So here's how we're looking uh, with our lineup. I know pretty rough, but um, we're we're playing a little bit of money ball here. But we've been making some moves, and and I'll talk about those here in a second. Before we do, I want to show you the pitching rotation. So Frankie Montes. Um, we are now not going to trade him. We're going to move him from the block. Like he is the ace to build around right now. He's an arbitration next year uh, and then a free agent. Caprielian, um, 77 uh, overall here. Cole Irvin coming in after that. And then we've got Hayes Luce Lazardo, who we just traded for, who's now going to be uh, a starter uh, for us. Uh, here in Miami, uh, he 17 games, um, really just came out of the pen here. 211 whip, which is. Pretty, pretty bad, but I feel like if we get him to settle in here, he's going to do much better. And then Honeywell is going to come in fifth here. The pen has not changed at all. Let's continue to stay as is. But here is now your Oakland Athletics um, for the rest of this year. A couple other things to point out. We've got Gunnar Hoglin, who's creeping up there. He's been moved up to AA to prepare him for either be AAA or MLB next year. Uh, it's unsure. Ryan Cusick, who came over that in that trade, also in AA, also creeping up there. And then Zach Lug in AA. So we've got three guys there 
um, that are on the on the climb. George Kirby, who we just got in that trade, top 100 prospect. We're going to start him in AAA, 24 years old, A potential, 65 overall. And then Max Meyer, we've got him in single A just for a little bit, but I think we're going to bump him up to double A potentially at the end of the season. And then Michael Burrows, who came in that trade, also in single A. He needs a little bit more time too. For catchers, so Shay Langoliers, who came in the trade earlier, he's in AAA right now, but him and Austin Allen are going to battle to see who gets the, the starting job. And then behind that, we even got Bo Naylor, right? Like I said before, we are stacked at catcher. We also got Geo Douglas in the draft. First round pick, he's going to come in, uh, and I think going to be, what, low 60s? So he's going to be, um, you know, behind Rodriguez and Soderstrom. Um, this is going to be pretty ripe. I think with Sean Murphy's contract, uh, kind of getting into the arbitration phase here to 2025. Um, we might actually have to deal him and then lean on Langoliers and Allen and Naylor to be our one, two, and three guys. At first base, um, you know, we didn't make any moves because we have McKinney, who's an outfielder, converted to first base. Muncie is our best second baseman, but because he's 19, I want to give him a season in single A to get the confidence up. Jed Lowry is, of course, hurt. Uh, Schwayman is in, in AAA. Um, and then we just kind of have like a ragtag bunch. Look at all D potential here. So second baseman is going to be something we have to address. Noisy, our starter, of course, Earman, uh, in AAA, uh, and then Kevin Smith, um, lower down here, but B potential. I think we, we, at 25 years old, we need to, need to give him some, some playing time. Poisson, this is the, our future star, 19 years old, probably one of the best players on the team right now, but I had to keep him in single A for another season. Um, Got to make sure his, uh, you know, his, his ratings continue to climb up and he does well, we'll move him to double A or maybe triple A next year. We'll see. We may, we may need to pull the trigger on him being the MLB, but that is the reason why Logan Davidson is now in the MLB 70 overall 24. We want to get him some time here. Seth Brown injured. Uh, and we picked up, uh, as you saw, Eddie Hernandez, 24 year old, 72 year old B potential guy. This dude is already a stud. I, it's kind of completely overlooked uh, that he was in free agency and not picked up by a club. So we grabbed him. He's probably going to be our starter in left field maybe next year. Um, but uh, it remains to be seen. It seems we'll, we're going to see. We'll have to see what Seth Brown does here. Glenn Fletcher, also who he signed, is now our best center fielder at 19 years old. Um, I have him in AAA right now. Um, just because we don't have a uh, everyday AAA center fielder, uh, and so uh, with Ga with Gabriel Maciel in Double A and Pache, uh, Barrera and Bolt um, here, this is kind of uh, how we're looking. I think we probably need to move Victor Victor Mesa up to Double A right fielder. Okay, so JJ Blade who came over in that trade, um, top prospect, uh, you know, right now um, in Double A. Um, going to get a little bit of, uh, uh, you know, going to be an everyday starter there, hopefully going to be in the MLB next year. For now, we've got McKinney, um, and, and then Cody Thomas, who we brought up, you know, being 27 years old, everything's complete 29 million in player salaries, complete organization is set up. Wow. The Mariners are coming back. They've got a trade for me. Let's see it. Stecken Ryder for Sheldon Noisy. That is an absolute no. Wow, Frankie Montas, fractured wrist. When it rains, it pours. 60-day injured list. We've got contract extensions coming up here in a few days. Lots to consider. Sean Murphy, do we resign Sean Murphy? Seth Brown, Capriellian, Cole Irvin, Trevino, Noisy, Lazardo, Pache, Davidson. Lots of guys that we do need to bring back here. John Murphy is looking for quite a lot, $7.6 million a year. I don't think we're going to be able to resign him. He's looking for $2.2 .2 million a year, which actually is understandable. The 600 OPS that he has, though, at 29 years old, tells me my gut is, uh, and with a negative war, that we need to let him walk, especially with that torn hamstring that he's got. Caprielian, he wants 2.7 a year. And if I look at his stats, 373, 1 2 whip, pretty good. F4, 1 3, FIP, 4.31. I really am considering signing Caprielian here. I would only want to give him like 
a one year deal because it's renewable here. I think that's what we'll do. We'll try and extend him for a year to get this get this renewable. Add a few years or we can make something work. I don't know. I don't know if we can. Cole Irvin, 47 ERA, 134 whip, not bad. One 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 F war. Fit 4.39. Not terrible at 28 years old. Um I don't let's we'll see. What could we do? We could offer him a year just to be renewable here. Let's see if he will accept. They all want more years. I don't know if we're going to be able to land that. Trevino, 776 ERA, 198 whip, negative war, 578 FIP. I think we're going to let him walk. Noisy, 27. As you said, big time player for us here. A31, 1.8 war. ISO uh, 174, runs created, WRC plus. Um, we don't know the plus to, to kind of look at this, but he's created 50 runs this season. <laughs> oh. We could get him for two years. Let's see if he'll do, if he'll extend for two years here. I think he will. All right, so Sheldon, he returns for a couple more years, especially with that performance. All right, Lazardo, we know he's new to the squad. We just brought him in. He has one win, um, negative war. But I, I, you know, I think I uh, because he came in that trade. I think um, we we need to get him something here. So if we do, let's, let's see if we can creep down here. I think he's gonna sign. Want to be okay with signing for a year? All right, so we got Lazardo back for another year. Performance-wise, hasn't been great, but I think he needs just a little bit more time to pan out. Um, you know, 21 runs created. Uh, all right, so let's see. We can get him for another two years renewable at 630 a year, and I think he will accept that. 219 ERA, 0.5 war, um, 3.54 fit. That's inc pretty good. He's 32 years old, though. Um, I don't, I don't know if we can bring him back. We did two years, 890. Now let's give it a shot. See if he'll accept. All right. So he signs. We're bringing him back. Austin Allen, 247, 600 OPS, uh, 0.5 war and 10 runs created. Um, let's see here. What does he want? Let's see. Can we get him back for a year renewable? That's the question. He will come back for one year. Give ourselves one more year here. And it looks like he will. Let's give him to 700. Oh, no. No. I don't know if we're going to be able to get Alan back. I don't want to give him more years. Um, he's, look, he's looking for a lot more money there. Jordan Diaz. Just brought him up. So far, 295. That's not. That's pretty good. 7.6 ER uh, um, OPS. 0.5 war, already 13 runs created, more than Pache in, in uh, less games. What is he going to want, though? So, hey, we could renew him, and it looks like he's going to sign for that. So we'll bring him back. We'll renew him. Uh, don't think we need to bring him back. Kevin Smith, who came in from that trade, I think we need to find a way to make it work for him. So we can renew here. Try this. Okay, Kevin Smith is back. I think we do want to take a look at Kirby Sneed, though, that also came over in that, that deal. We can get him on a three-year renewable deal here. Um, let's see, that's 770. Let's see if he'll let's have, see if he'll take it. All right, so he's in. Did we try and sign Logan Davidson? I thought we did. Oh, we might have we might have passed him up on accident because we can renew him for three years, which would be great. We give him for seventy a year. Great. Okay, we must have missed him somehow. All right, but contracts. I have to say, contract uh, signings went pretty good. Okay, we got to upgrade the the trade block here. So Murphy, we're adding. Seth Brown, we're adding. Uh, Caprielian, we're adding. Irvin and Trevino. First up, let's see what we can get for Sean Murphy. I think this is the trade. Center fielder, Brandon Davis. Starting pitcher, Caleb Killian. We're going to make this deal. Next up, Seth Brown. We've struck a deal with the Tigers. Ty Madden, Roberto Campos for Seth Brown. 
Now up, Caprielian. Top prospect, Videl Braun. Third baseman, Austin Martin. Could grab him. Boris Whitley and Brian Abreu. Both be potential guys. Want to come over from the Astros. Edward Cabrera and Cody Morissette. I think this is the deal with the Marlins. Now for Cole Irvin. Xavier Edwards for Cole Irvin straight up. This is a great deal. We're going to take it. And last but not least, Lou Trevino. Spencer Howard, relief pitcher with B potential for Lou Trevino. Hmm. This looks like a great deal. Matt Cronin, relief pitcher, 24 with B potential. And Brandon Bossier for Lou Trevino. The MLB season has officially ended. We came in last. 56 in 106. Hey, we, we had more than 55 wins. But one thing we haven't looked at just yet is the rest of the league. So Astros take the West, 97 wins. Mets uh, take the East with 93. Brewers, interesting, in the Central with 90. Dodgers, uh, Giants, and Padres all clinch, all with above 90 wins. Dodgers with 106 wins. Wow. Yankees and Rays. Oh, ho, ho. Red Sox had a rough year, but Yankees and Rays. Uh, and then the White Sox, 111 wins. Wow. Guardians coming in after that. And uh, back to the Strohs, looking at some of the league leaders. Mike Trout, no surprises, 336. Wow. He's, he always does so well. 1,100 OPS. 11.7 uh, war. 162 runs created. That is almost like a run a game. You can count on him for a run a game. Wow. Brantley. Did have a pretty good season. Very interesting here. Uh, on the NL side, wow, Alex Bohm, 322. Led it here. Somehow, Jesse Winker is on the Marlins. I'm not sure how he got there. We might have to check a look at that. Yelch is on the injured list, but he's up there. Nico Horner, interesting. Mookie on the injured list. Oh, wow. This one hurts, guys. Elvis Andrus, who we traded to the Marlins, 288 here. Uh, what type of a year did he have? So, 7,700 7, OPS, 3.7 war, 81 runs created. But hey, we had to deal him. He was just a little bit too much on the books. Looks like they threw him in over uh, um, Miguel Rojas there. Uh, who led in home runs? So, <laughs> Fernando Tatis with 42 home runs. And Mike Trout with 51. Wow, that's pretty incredible. Uh, oh, so Trout with the highest OPS. Vlad Jr. coming in after that. A Rosarina, 9 to 6. Wow, Kyle Lewis, 916. Winker would have the best uh, in the NL. That's pretty, pretty interesting. Uh, let's look at, uh, so Bassett, former a uh, A's guy as well. 2.21 ERA. And Garrett Cole is going to lead it on the AL side. So pretty interesting here. Whip Garrett Cole with the best whip under one. Walker Bueller and uh, Antonio uh, Senzatella with a whip under one. Statistics on our team. Uh, let's actually sort by OPS. Jed Lowry, of course, he would get the highest OPS. You know, he only had played 39 games. Uh, Cody Thomas, 18. So yeah, there he is. Sheldon Noisy, 134 games. Had our, the highest OPS on the team, 816. If I look just purely at runs created, 1.4 uh, war. If I look at runs created, 81. So led the team, definitely uh, had a stellar year. Uh, coming in after that, Logan Davidson, after we brought him up, only played 13 games, but uh, 245. What was his OPS? 750. Kevin Smith after that. Uh, Jordan Diaz, who gave more and more playing time. He did really good with playing 80 games. Uh, Luis Barrera uh, did okay, too. Austin Allen, Sky Bolt, Brona Bride. So Pat Pache just never really turned it around. McKinney, very unfortunate failure here. 121 games, and he just, just never could put it together. Um, and then, um, yeah, so he, he would round out him and Pache, the, the historic underperformers here. Uh, Langoliers didn't get a ton of time, but when he did, um, didn't do that great either. Either So if I look at pitchers, if I just sort by whip here, uh, Selman as our closer, um, he pitched tw uh, 20 innings. Uh, what was that? Two whip approximately what it was. I think I 
Did I skip it? I think I did. Uh, yeah, 2.2 2 here. Let's sort here. There we go. Uh, Guerra with a one whip. Wow, that's pretty good. Out with 44 innings pitched. Jimenez also did really good too. One three five. Blackburn even did. Okay, 184 innings pitched. Uh, he did pretty good. Montas, of course. Um, Marquez, who the closer we brought up here, he threw nine innings, six Ks. Um, decent whip. Puck. Killian Kirby. Lazardo. He started to put it together towards the end here. Um, but yeah. Uh, looks like Selman, uh, unfortunately, had our highest whip here. Uh, but yeah, there there we have it. So getting into uh, the calendar, um, simming to the postseason. We obviously did not make the postseason. Uh, if I get to the postseason here, there we go. We did not finish. The regular season has come to an end. There's your playoff bracket. Yankees, Astros, Blue Jays, Rays uh, to face then the White Sox. Uh, on the NL side, Milwaukee's going to go up against the Mets, and then San Diego and San Francisco are going to play in the wild card to play the Dodgers. So um, let's uh, let's see how this goes. Advancing a couple days here, advancing today. Giants take down the Padres there, and Toronto will then take it. So, okay, Dodgers there. Giants, 1-1 one, one there. Houston's going ahead by two. Brewers on ahead by two. White Sox on ahead by two. Interesting to see this White Sox team, see if they're going to they're gonna win here. So Houston, Houston will take down the Yankees. Huh? And then the Dodgers will beat the Giants, and Milwaukee will take down the Mets. All right, so, wow. Toronto put on a fight, but it's going to be Chicago and Houston or Milwaukee and the Dodgers. So let's see how this goes. Okay, so White Sox and Dodgers get ahead. They split in the AL side. Dodgers are just cleaning house here. So Dodgers is your NL um, representative in 2-2 here. Oh, no. Houston might take down. They might down. Oh, and they do. So the White Sox with that 111 one games um, will get taken down by the Strohs uh, to go up against Houston and the Dodgers. We're not going to take a look at those teams. We will in the future, but we're not going to this year because I think the teams are going to look very familiar. But let's just see how this World Series is going to go. All right. Houston will take game one. Dodgers will take game two. Have a day break. Dodgers take game three and game four. And the Dodgers, wow, they have beat the Astros in the 2022 um, World Series. Let's take a look at... Um, Let's take a look at some of these awards. Really curious to see um, how these look here. So World Series MVP. Wow. Kevin Pillar. Uh, 667, one home run, two ribbies. Um, if I look at the MVP in the AL, Trout makes complete sense. Uh, Otani in 2021. Trout in 2022. Runners up, Vlad um, and Jordan Alvarez. Tatis is going to take it home on the NL side. That 42 Home run season's pretty impressive. Cy Young, Garrett Cole is going to get it. Robbie Ray, 19 uh, and 8 this year. Good year there. Zach Wheeler um, is going to take it on the NL side, 19 and 7, 3 ERA. Uh, DeGrom and Gonsolin, um, pretty good. Interesting. All right. On the batting title, of course, makes a ton of sense. Trout, Brantley, and Ramon Urias. So that's a, that's a uh, nice one. Alec Bohm. Uh, and then Winker. Uh, and Freddie Freeman. So, uh, okay, reliever Presley in training uh, for Rookie of the Year. Oh, Neil Cruz. So he did, I guess, get moved up here. Uh, Seiya Suzuki almost gets, um, he has 273. Remember, he was hurt a little bit of the year, but still 22 home runs. So, uh, and then Seth, Seth Beer uh, in, inside of that. So O'Neill Cruz as a TH, guess he didn't get the start in the field, is going to be your... National League Rookie of the Year. Then, of course, Torque makes a ton of sense. Uh, 279, 23 home runs. Um, Spencer Torkelson, Rookie of the Year there. Hank Aaron, Trout, and Winker. Uh, we will not take a look at gold gloves, but there you have it. Um, just going through there. Postseason MVP, Trey Turner, Jordan Alvarez. Uh, and we looked, We took a look at, um, uh, at, the, at the MVP. Simming to the off season, we have a, a lot of work to do, as you've uh, heard 
Uh, and I'm looking forward to you guys being on this road with us. We've got to stay under $35 million. We're, all, we're so, we're in a very good place there. Um, but in the next episode, you're going to see how we're going to be looking at evaluating players here in these episodes. So, all right, wish us luck. We'll see you in the next one.